right. So um, I just want to go through a few calculations um, on how to measure body fluid compartments. I know that you know the compartments, but it is vital for you to understand how uh, to calculate them. Uh, so the first thing I'm going to say is that uh, in reference to a 70 kg uh, physiological man, we see that the total body water in uh, this individual will be a 60% of the weight. Now, 60% of the weight in this case, we're speaking of 70 kgs. So you're going to find that it's 42 and it's in liters. Uh, the demarcations are as you remember them. So we have the total body water, which we have calculated as 42 liters. And this is as ECF, demarcated as ECF and ICF, which is intracellular fluid. Now, this demarcation is such that in the ICF, 20%, now 20% of what? 20% of the weight is actually ICF, um, uh, ECF actually, I beg your pardon, 40%, 40% is, is, is um, intracellular, was 20% of the weight is ICF. So what am I talking about? 20% of, in this case, 70, was the side is 40% of 70. So this side, you're going to find that it's about 14 liters, and this side is about 28 liters. But suction-wise, you see that a third of the total body water is ECF, whilst two-thirds of this total body water is actually intracellular. So one-third of 42 still give you 14, while two-thirds of 42 will give you 28 liters, which is what we found earlier. But what we see is that in ECF, we have plasma, and we also have um, interstitial fluid. They usually, they actually use percentage. For plasma, they say this is 5% of um, the weight. So you're going to calculate this as 5 over 100 of 70. And this is going to be 15%. So this will be 15 over 100 of 70. So in this case, you're going to have 5 by uh, 70 uh, divided by 100, which will give you about 3 point. Um, well, this side is going to have 15 divided by 100. So again, 15 divided by 100. And this is 15 divided by 100 multiplied by 70, which is about 10.5. So you see that they use values that are close to this one. Which one do I want you to use in class? Or for the sake of examinations, please use the one on top. Okay, having said that, how do you calculate? How do you measure? So in measuring these fluids, we have some assumptions. First of all, of the dye itself. So the dye should be, uh, it should not be any of this. It should not be poisonous. It should not be metabolized. It should not be excreted. And um, there's one more, there's one more, there's one more. Yes, this one is a mask. It should only stay in the desired compartment. So let's go back. The compartment
compartments are the one that you mostly interact with is plasma. This has a connection with the interstitium. So the interstitium and the plasma are connected by yes, the capillary membrane. So capillary membranes are not as, you know, sort of protective. So there's a lot of interaction that may occur between these two. But between the interstitium and the intracellular fluid, you actually have the plasma membrane, which is not very permeable. So the idea is you have to get a dye that will stay only in the plasma if you want to measure the plasma uh, compartment. If you want to measure the extracellular, it has to go into the plasma as well as the ICS. That way you're going to get ISF interstitium. That way you're going to get the extracellular fluid. If you want to measure everything, then your dye has to have the capacity to actually move from the plasma to the interstitium and through the plasma membrane to the um, ICS. That way you'll be able to measure total body water. Now, usually we don't have one that just goes through to the intracellular. So what we do is we can get the total body water and we can get the IC, the extracellular. And then we say total body water minus extracellular fluid will give us the intracellular fluid. Um, so how do we do this exactly? So what we do, number one, we use C1, V1 is equal to C2, V2. So the principle is that if you have a container and you put in a dye with a non-concentration and non-volume, so you have your C1 and you have your V1, you after it mixes, you will take out a portion and calculate and uh, estimate the concentration, which is C2. With that, you will be able to use V2 equal to C1, V1 over C2 to calculate your volume. So let us say you had a dye that you knew was um, of a concentration of 10 milligrams per meal and you decided to use one meal of that into the container. After mixing, you get out and you estimate the concentration to be 0 0.01 milligrams per meal. Then you could calculate this and say V2 is going to equal uh, 10 milligrams per meal uh, times 1 over 0 0.01 milligrams per meal. Let me just erase this. So again, I was saying you're going to have uh, V2 equal to um, C2, sorry, C1 times V1 over C2. So it's going to be C1 was zero was ten milligrams per meal. You're gonna multiply that by one meal. And then you're going to divide this by zero point zero one milligrams per meal. So these are gonna cancel, then you're gonna have something like one thousand meals, which is the same as one liter. So basically, that is what you do. So in what we had earlier, we have um, in the plasma, the only one that can go in there is even blue. So once you put even blue into the uh, into plasma, it will stay in the plasma. That way. 
as long as you know what your C1 and your B1 is and you estimate what your C2 is, you can calculate how much plasma you have. Okay? Um, so that is the first one. The second one is um, one that goes into the plasma, but it has the ability to go into the interstitium. So this one is known as uh, bromine. So with bromine, you're able to um, calculate then uh, after you get your C2, your C2 will be representative of all the fluid from the plasma to the interstitium. So this is the ECF. So you're able to calculate the extracellular fluid. Though some literature has said that bromine may have some accidental cellular distribution, but it can be used to measure ECF. Uh, what can you use to measure everything? So there is one that can go past, um, let's see if we can use this here, past the membrane into the cell. And this one is known as the tritium oxide. So it can go everywhere. So in using tritium oxide, you're able to see fluid in the plasma, plus the ISF, plus the ICF. So this will give you total body water. So from here, in order for you to see what's going on only in the intracellular, you can say TDW, which is this one, and you subtract what you found in the ECF. That way you'll be able to get your ICF. I'm going to end there because most of the other things you did them um, in class. Um, so the only thing that you need to read through is um, read through in Ganong and Gaiton on how these have reported um, the calculation of plasma and ISF in terms of percentages. Uh, remember the 5% and 16, always is the one-third and the two-thirds of ECF. This one is 5% of, of weight. So check out what they have said. It will be intriguing for you to understand the various things that people are using. But as I said in class, we will go through um, with the one-third and the two-thirds.